In charge of the ring, Raul Geis Jr. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears black trunks adorned with the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. On the scale, he weighed in at an official 119 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring in his 21st professional bout with an outstanding record of 17 victories against one lone defeat, two draws, six of those victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Mexicali, Baca, California, Mexico. Puro Chicali. Eduardo, el fantástico bye. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing blue with silver trim, he weighed in at an official 120 pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring an undefeated professional with 14 victories, six of those victories coming by way of KO, representing his homeland of Yerevan, Armenia. Nadek, the dancing killer, Avgadia. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron las instrucciones que una pelea limpia. Legal punches, golpes legales, here for you. Legal punches here for you. Touch gloves, glove to both. And we are set to go. The most famous man inside that ring. Hall of Famer, Freddie Not Roach. He'll be working the corner for that man. Abgarian takes on Baez. This one's scheduled for Ready. eight rounds. Listo. Box. Here we go. Guys, I gotta wonder if a guy like Eduardo Baez decides to come out here, maybe push the pace a little bit more, see if he can surprise Abgarian. Very good jab by Mr. Fantastico. You like that name, huh? I like it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I wrote it down in full <laughs> print. You're not changing Sean Fantastico Porter on you, Showtime? Not at all, but he's, his jab looks to be fantastic right now. And I tell every fighter, use your jab. Your jab is the most important weapon you have. Stop, stop, stop. You okay? Okay. Fantastico is okay. fine, Sean. Box. His opponent's the dancing killer. How are you the dancing killer, yeah. I, you know, when, when you're the dancing killer, I just don't know what to expect from you in the <laughs> ring. Are you... Are you someone who can use the ring and, and dance and move around? Or? You had me a killer. <laughs> Early on, though, Baez finding some success. A smart man once told me that a good jab can blind you. By controlling the distance, controlling the, the, the ring. Watch your hands, Kyle. Okay, stop. It's okay. Another headbutt there. I think that's maybe three right there already. I think a little bit like the, like the last fight we just saw. These these guys are both. They're two come, come straight ahead type of fighters. Yeah. We may see more headbutts tonight. This is a good start for Baez for all of those things we talked about. Standing upright, using that jab. He's darting into land. He's getting out of trouble. Uh, typically, he could be there to be hit in his previous fight, Sean. So good to see him navigate that distance well. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the number one thing. Are you improving? Are you trying to get your game better than it was in the previous outing? And use the movement and use the defense. It's, it's definitely a big improvement by him. Talk about the movement. Nara Garian, who training with Freddie Roach, man, his footwork is sensational. Gets in, gets out, side to side. That's the name of the game. I think a lot of guys lose track of that by trying to knock somebody out or by trying to hit somebody a hundred times. Careful not behind the head. Careful not behind the head. You got to hit and not get hit. Good counter right hand right there by Derek. And I think his game plan is to counter with that right hand like he just did and also get to the body. Nice international field tonight. Ring City, USA. Last fight here with us. Rajanovic getting the win. The Canadian over the Mexican fighter. And here we've got Mexico versus Armenia. Ring City goes everywhere to find yes, her. That we got Showtime Sean Porter sitting ringside. That's straight up legit. <laughs> Good opening round for both fighters here at Ring City, USA in California. Good job.
Todd. The jab, I think, was the most important uh, weapon for both these fighters in the first round. We just saw right there. Derek. Uh, however, uh, Eduardo Baez was using a great jab of his own through the course of the entire first round. Freddie Roach, the seven-time trainer of the year in the Boxing Hall of Fame. As we get set for round number two, Narek Abdarian in the blue with the silver trim. Eduardo Baez, colors of Mexico. What I like about Narek is he's in control. Uh, he's got Baez coming right at him. And, and, and in a lot of ways, pressuring him, throwing more punches. But Narek is under control. He's seeing the punches that he wants to throw. And he's not wasting any of them. Well, he is, he's a very, sorry, he's a very classy fighter. It's not just the footwork that Todd mentioned. His defense is always on point. He has a way of getting out of trouble just as the opponent is, is stretching forward and leaning in. Very good navigator of distance. And there you see the scoring of Steve Smoker unofficially. He has bias between that first round 10-9. Oh, my God. Bias. Steve Smoker said Bias was controlling the distance with that excellent jab. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing it a little bit more of a dancing killer this week. Yeah. And, and, you know, just because his name's a dancing killer, it's not all about can you move. But, you know, I, want, I do want to see that killer instinct, and I am starting to see him use more offense than he did in the previous round. It's only the first round. You had to get warm, had to fill out the fight, fill out the fighter. But now he's starting to find his range. And to your point, before this fight started about getting warm, temperatures now dipping into the mid-50s with 70% humidity and a slight breeze. So as a boxer, I can see you come out, you've got a sweat built up, but uh, that's got to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done the best I could to tell all these fighters, keep your clothes on as long as you can, yeah. especially when you come out here, because once it hits you, it's, it's like a slap in the face. Yeah. And it's going to take a minute for you to get to really get warm. Mother Nature doesn't play around. Okay, very good adjustment so far by Abgarian in this round. It's all coming with that footwork. If you notice, we said Baez getting off early with the jab in round one. He's had a tough time once he sets his feet. Finding Abgarian in front of him, he can't find him. And that's allowing him to give up his height advantage where... Narek can do much better work on the inside. And he's, uh, he switched momentarily for about 20 right. 30 seconds right there. And right there, he just spit. Watch your hands. Uh, 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 and, and then countered with a, with a very good right hand and then right back on his bicycle. <laughs> Contrasting styles here in round number two. 40 seconds to go. This one's scheduled for eight. And going to Kurt Batia's report on Narek and his love of chess and how that helps him. He seems to be a strategic fighter, guys. He's looking for the opening. He's going to take what Eduardo Baez gives him. He's dangerous with both hands. It looks like he's he's very good from the orthodox position as, as well as the southpaw. He looks com er, uh, comfortable in both positions, and he's he's really showing all of the uh, offensive wep weaponry he has. Good body. Should look double the hook to the body. Hook to the head. Baez is cut. Two ends with a flurry. So Freddie Roach has caught his fighter well. And as he continues to do work in the corner, the tributes to the great man continue to pour in. So here we go. Round number three between Narek Agarian and Eduardo Baez. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just bring it up, bring it up. Okay, here we go. Certain low shot. And what you pointed out earlier, we saw it in this fight earlier. Both fighters tend to come in and they're dropping their level down, dropping low. So I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen head bumps for low blows. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, Narek, he does it because that's a part of his game. That's what, yeah. that's what he has to do. He's got to change his levels in order to, to make the other guy miss. However, Baez is dipping down to hit a guy. Use your long arms and hit this guy. You don't have to get as close as, you, as you're getting. And on top of that, you're bringing your head first, which is just causing the head collisions. Going southpaw again. Darian. He's switching up like that. You know, he, here's the thing. He's shuffling his feet. It's almost like he's going to... He, he squares up, shuffles his feet, and he's, it's almost like he's going to go with whatever offensive side he's on. It's the foot he's going to put out front. He's, he's very good with, with, from both sides. See, here's the shuffle, and then he'll stop right there. He's got the angle he needs, and now the right foot's out front. This continues to come forward, and Agarian's footwork continues to be so polished. See that? Look, 
Baez forced him back to the left. He just, he just switched up, put his left foot out for him, and takes a few shuffles to the left. Baez showing good class here. Ba yeah, for sure. Baez yeah. is showing good class. I, I just, I, it bothers me. When you have long arms, you got good speed, good jab, good, good straight punches, and you choose to get close to a guy. You don't have to. I think these guys make the fights harder than they need to be. Sean, to your point, is that frustration? Is that ego? Just wanting to do what you want to do? And yeah, I think it's a lot of doing what you want to do. And I, it's no secret bias to say, hey, I have a Mexican style. And, you know, we've said it time and time again that it's more of a straight, straight style. And you bring the action. Bring your head along with it, and in, in the turn, head. you take a lot of shots. Hey, don't do that. And also, don't if you're having trouble you tracking go. down your opponent, who has phenomenal footwork that we've seen from Narek so far, you're gonna run into it all. <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna square up and throw yep. eventually. Yep. Yep. You're gonna square up and run into it all. <laughs> so Garin receives the warning. Told him he does it again. You get a point taken away. We'll see how that plays out. He, he basically they got they got close, and he bumped Baez off with his head. That's just. It's not smart. It's not something you should do. However, guys like that who understand this is a physical sport, they tend to use their heads and bounce the guy off of them. Much better round by Bayez, too. Well, in the fourth round, when we return to Hollywood. Right here, you see Bayez. He's, or excuse me, Narek. He's able to get Bayez off balance. And then that's when he delivers his blows. I talked about the ring and the, and the size of the ring, not being able to move. You can see Dark's gonna move. He's gonna be on the on the on the in the corner from corner very quickly. But he's got the he's got the conditioning that it takes to maintain that type of fighting style. And if you have the kind of, the, the kind of conditioning it takes, you can box from the outside, have your back against the ropes like Narc is doing, and be able to turn your guy and get him in the position you want him in. Right here we see this, this is a wide view of the ring, and you can just see that the ring's a, it's a little, a little smaller than than, the, than than most rings you see. Unconventional. Yeah, right, right here we don't see uh, Narek using the movement, but you know if we had seen this right here a little sooner uh, during the wide view, you'd see that. It doesn't take many steps for him to get to from one side to the other. It makes a difference in terms of your fighting style and what you can do and what you want to do. Hey, Brian, I've got to ask you, is this normal movement for Narek, or is he having to adjust to move more aggressive bias? Uh, all the movement for him, and is it psychologically, you're, you're kind of feeling like you're being walked down? Oh, for sure. This is, uh, normally Narek can make adjustments, have the advantages in the craft and the footwork. And also, we talked about, look, we talked about the Mexican style all the time. It's right. so, an overused term. We said, what's the Armenian style? Oh, he told me, he said it's a thinking man style. So fight smarter, not harder. And specifically, he said, we fight so that a brawl can and shouldn't occur at the end of the day. It's going to be interesting if Bias can keep cutting off the ring. We're going to find out right away if Abgarian can fight as well as he can box on the inside. And Abgarian also said, hey, we don't want that firefight, but I can make it happen if I need to. Yeah. So, I mean, we've even seen that. We've seen him lay on the ropes. We've seen him fight back and things like that. But he's definitely trying to get room to think. And Bias is making that hard for him. No bias. Black, green, white, and red trim. Trunks continues to walk down Narek Abgarian. And Abgarian using such more head bobs and face to get away from him. You see the cut of the forehead now of bias. Yeah, Baez has transitioned into full Mexican style here. But it is effective. Let's give him that credit. Punches and punches, yeah. cutting the ring off. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope I didn't uh, paint the picture that a Mexican style of fighting is not effective or, or doesn't work. Uh, the first fight with Torres, I just thought that she should, should have changed up and done something a little different. And I feel the same about Baez. I feel like he should get some, some distance with, and use those long arms. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. I mean, take a look right there. Uh, Gary, you're, you're laying your head in there. You're asking for trouble when you do stuff like that. Back with a headbutt that happened in the in the second round. Baez, use those long arms. When you use your head and come straight in like that. Both of these guys, you're asking for trouble. Narek doesn't mind. 
And then here's this, here's the next, the very last round. <laughs> There's that headbutt of uh, of Narek. He's just laying his head up there, and then he's using the kind of the bump. Oh, uh, off of him. Leaves him with a cut. Maya says, I'm ready to go. Entertaining fight so far through four rounds. Baez has been the more aggressive fighter. Abgarin may be the more strategic fighter. I really use this analogy. You know how when, you, when football team, they run a screen and yep. they want the other guys to come at them right, right. and then they toss the ball off? That's exactly what's happening right now to Baez. Nart wants you to come in. He Drawing wants him you in. To, to overextend and then he's going to try to capitalize. He wants you to be an overaggressive linebacker and come out. <laughs> Steve Smoker unofficially, another round going the way of Eduardo Baez as we check in now with Kurumbatia. Legendary trainer Freddy Roach, of course, training Nara Kavagari. And between rounds, he told him, I want more combinations. Uh, something else Freddy does is he will take a deep breath himself and have his fighters mimic that. He feels like that's the best way to get them to take a deep breath. In the blue corner, there's some frustration. They want Bias to trap Narek in the corner. They don't like that Narek is getting out of the corner. When I asked them, how do you trap someone who's moving like this? Sean, you're going to like their answer. They said, we want Bias to go to the body. Yeah. Back to you guys. There you go. Go to the body, but I, I can even go a step further. Use your jab. You can use your jab. It's almost like a broomstick. And, and, and direct your guy. Direct Narek into the corners if that's what you want him to be doing. If I'm biased right now, I'm telling my trainer, thanks for the ideas. I'm doing pretty well out there right now, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I actually have a 2-2. Uh, uh, I'm not in full agreement with Smoker, but I can see. I mean, Bias is the more aggressive fighter. Both guys are landing punches. Uh, and and punches. But I, yeah, but I just, I just don't feel that Bias is, is in complete control mm. uh, the way that Smoker is. Abgarian connecting on that big left. Baez, it looks like to me, he's landing more punches, but are they damaging punches? Are they effective punches? They might be. They might not be. But let's give him a credit for ring generals. Oh, no you know, question at, the at all. Day, Absolutely. Uh, you, you do this in front of a judge round after round. Yeah. You're the aggressor that can win out. Hey, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're the aggressor, but does that mean you're the ring generals? I feel that good body shot there by Baez. I didn't think it was low. Man. He's got a better. I mean, you make the dancing killer dance your dance, right? You make him fight your style yeah. on there your you terms. There's there something go. to be said for that. I can't argue with that, BC. I can't argue with that. I, I tried, but I'm going to let it go. Baez seems to be slowing down just a little bit as we come to the final 20 seconds here, round number five. And I'll tell you what, it has been this same pace since round number one. Remember, this one's scheduled for eight. Much tougher fight than I believe Freddy or Narek really uh, expected to come again. There's been one second, guys, of a feeling out period. These guys, as soon as the bell goes, they are in the middle, throwing it. I, I, I kind of felt like the first round was yeah. was a uh, uh, was a filling out round, but it hasn't. I mean, this this pace, this level, it's been here since the very end of the round. The first round. And that's Steve Smoker, unofficial scorecard. Every round goes away to Mexican fighter Eduardo Bias. Combination punching inside from Bias when they do get close. As much as Abgarian is trying to gain back control here. It, it's falling into Bias's hands. The pace of this fight, the direction, the corner. Sean, you talked about that. You end up there, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I felt like it was effective for Narek earlier in the fight using his movement. He was able to turn Bias. He was able to get keep Bias off balance. But Bias has slowed him down. And he's really starting to connect with just by everything he throws. Big hooks right there. Three big hooks in a row. You talked about Kern a moment ago. So Kern's report about how Baez's corner wanted him to keep Narek in the corner. He's doing a better job of that. He's not letting him out. He's getting his money's worth when he corners him. Well, guess what? When you slow a fighter down, where is he going to go? He's going to go from the ropes to the corners. From the corners to the ropes. Watch your hands. Cuidado con las cabezas, los dos. Don't lean in there like that. 
nice one too right there. Uh, the pressure, pressure burst pipes. That's what we always say. He's been bringing the pressure all night. Hands down. Narc, you don't have that kind of uh, comfortable comfortable space that you think you have. Right there is another one too clean. Right there, right down the pipe by uh, Bias there. No, what is no, no, Okay. It's the last round. This is going to be a big round for me. Let's go. Last round. Toca Mante. Let's go. I know what Steve Smoker thinks. Oh, the last few years, BC, and then you shot. You sensing a big upset here. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And Bias told us interestingly coming in that he doesn't have much to gain from this fight. He says the pressure is on a Guardian. There's much more for him from the standpoint of using this fight to advance. And Bias is fighting like a champion. He's got the right spirit, the right confidence level. He's walking him down. I love him throw. I tell you what, Ring City doesn't just have boxing on NBC tonight. They got great fighters on NBC tonight. This guy in Bias right here, fighting with determination and grit. You got to feel like you're in control, but he's still coming hard coming forward. And throwing with a lot of fire right now, too. He's still got a lot of pop on his punches. Not trying to cruise over this last two minutes and 15 seconds. The Mexican superweight champion with his identical twin brother, Leonardo, a bantamweight fighter. He has shown what he has made of tonight, making his U.S. debut. At a Baja California Mexico. And look at this. Like every every t every time he touches Abigail, he's gonna get more and more confidence and just keep going. And that's a part of what his nature, that's a part of what he does. Well, look, Fortune has favored the, the bold and the opportunistic in this weird sort of pandemic boxing year. This is the fourth fight no, no, no. since the quarantine started for Bias no, and a 12 month layoff for Narek. You're seeing the difference in terms of being fresh right now. I can agree with that. I think that, you know. Everybody's different, but you know, that ring rust could well it very well have sat in for uh, for uh, Coming up next, still the main event. Charles Conwell taking on Madiar Ashkaya. Ten rounds in the main event here at Ring City, USA. <laughs> Why with you, BC? I tell you what, Bias has impressed me to the point of, if you believe Steve Smoker, and why wouldn't you unless you're Sean? He, he's pretty much in control of his fight, but yet he's not going out there just saying, I got it, and I'm just going to keep this thing home. I gave two rounds <laughs> to the other guy. What's your favorite part of the evening when you and Steve disagree? <laughs> But uh, I, a very good outing by fan, Mr. Fantastico. So he comes to the U.S., makes his debut, and it's successful as Eduardo Baez picks up his 18th performance.